Hey, Doombots, Tony Skinjili here today with a, kind of an interesting new take. I'm going to calling this the top 10 characters in most need of a rework. Now, there are plenty of characters that can benefit from a rework, so I went through and kind of picked 10 characters that are kind of homeless right now. Uh, Mysterio is not a particularly great character, nor is Deadpool, but they do have a home. You know, you can use Deadpool with Brawlers or as an alternate on a Mutants team with Storm and get a little bit of value out of them. When you look at these characters, you see that they don't really have a home. And some of them should, considering that the characters that share a tag with them did get reworks. And we'll just go right into it. No particular order, but we're going to pretend there's an order. We're going to say Winter Soldier is number 10, right? And Winter Soldier is a character that has really fallen off. He was almost never great, but there were situations in the very, very early game where you could get a lot of value out of a Winter Soldier. Uh, his turn one ultimate was more damaging than Iron Fist at the time, and his Relentless Assassin would consistently put bleed stacks. He was a pretty decent single target damage dealer. And as time has progressed, more characters have come, better single target damage dealers have uh, shown up, and he just kind of fell off. And, and that's even more unfortunate, considering the fact that he does give crit chance to Hydra allies, and the Hydra characters just got a rework. You can use him as he's still better technically than Hydra Grenadier, but... That slot is reserved for Red Skull, so you really don't have much value. Kind of like how Korath didn't get reworked when the Kree rework, uh, even though Ultimus did get a little bit. It's kind of the same, except Korath actually is a pretty decent character, uh, very middle of the line when it comes to damage and speed. Winter Soldier is slow, his damage has fallen off, he doesn't really have a home. He could definitely use a little bit of love. Uh, number two. Nine, I guess, uh, is Night Nurse. Now, anyone who's been playing this game for a long time remembers where Night Nurse was not only required, but mandatory in every stage. She was the only AoE healer. Now, we've obviously had multiple AoE healers come out since then. Minerva, Mantis, even Sinister has a really good heal. Uh, and that goes to show that something was left behind when it comes to Night Nurse. And... Ultimately, I don't believe her kit is terrible. I think having a basic with a chance to apply slow is really good. A single target heal is pretty decent. Uh, and an AoE heal with regeneration stacks, so a heal with a heal later. She has great abilities. Triage working relatively similarly to how Shield Assaults works. Pretty good. All in all... She has a good kit. The problem becomes her numbers. The, the numbers kind of have been outscaled, and they just need to kind of go back and look at specifically the percentages and maybe even the energy requirement on some of the heals. She can be a phenomenal city healer and a phenomenal raid healer again. It's just that without a higher percentage value on her heal and the fact that her stats are relatively low, she's not healing the numbers that you need to see when doing a lot of the end game content uh easy fix would make a lot of players lives easier especially in the early game i could tell you that as a free-to-play account player uh i've unlocked night nurse and she's not worth investing in but i would love a world where any character you invest in early because you have to for one reason or another does pay some dividends night nurse just isn't one of them she's not even good on blitz next i think no one would disagree Crossbones. Now, Crossbones is in a weird spot, as if you see a very high red star geared tier 14 Crossbones. You may have to look twice, you can't just ignore him. That said, you're not going to benefit from putting an awful lot of uh, gear and maybe getting lucky with high red stars on Crossbones. Like That's not something you want. It's not going to make a high impact in your gameplay. He's an adequate character, but he kind of falls in the same situation that Winter Soldier did. In the early stages of the game, he's phenomenal. You get to use him and, and progress through Villain's campaign, and he's great for that. But he falls really hard at about level 60, 65, and any investment you put into him up to that point, I don't want to say is wasted because you did use him, but 
you're never going to see that value back. Now, you can use him on war teams, uh, either on defense with like an Ultron or a tech team hybrid, or you can use him on offense with the Brotherhood if you're splitting them off to make the Boomhood team. He works very well with Kingpin in that he gets to ult with an offense up, and you know he's not terrible, but again, since a Hydra rework has just come around, and he grants armor, you know, he could have gotten a pass. Maybe a little bit of more damage. Maybe we could finally have gotten rid of this this taunt that he doesn't need. Uh, there are plenty of protectors that don't taunt. Invisible Woman and Yo-Yo and Crossbones. This taunt is his liability, and it's what turned him from a great AoE damage dealer to a liability that gets stunned by Spider-Man whenever he shows up. So Crossbones really could use maybe a quick pass to reevaluate what his kit does and how he works with his team. Next is Cable. Cable sucks. That's it. Everything on Cable uh, looks like it could matter, but either he doesn't do enough damage or he's too slow or the advantage you're going to take uh, from the speed bar value is so minuscule that all it does is throw off your timing. Now, I've used Cable on a lot of different teams. There are situations where Cable's overload ability is good, but it's not ever better than Hawkeye's ability, mainly because Hawkeye's speed is so great that he can turn rewind before someone else, uh, where Cable only turn rewinds the main character, main target by 50 and adjacents by 10. Hawkeye's is a little bit less, but it's guaranteed and faster. He doesn't do as much damage as uh, you would think a blaster would. He is relatively tanky for a blaster character, but when I think blaster, I think damage first. And then you could see a couple of other blasters like Iron Man or Black Bolt who are tankier and do damage. Cable has for too long been kind of left on the wayside ever since he came out and got that two piece value with Deadpool. Uh, you know, it was cute, but a lot of the two piece kits that they designed, uh, Ant Man and Wasp, uh, Vision and Scarlet Witch, they're not as impressive as I think they may have anticipated them being. And Cable goes in the exact same conversation. So, a decent character, to be sure, but he doesn't really jump out. He needs a little bit of love, whether it be giving him an X-Men tag, whether it be giving the rest of an X-Force team. Any of these things could be great, but until they do that, Cable is just kind of better left off with no investment, carrying the early stages of Blitz and never being used again. Uh, Yondu, another one I don't think anyone would have disagree with. Yondu is so awesome in the early game, having access to a giant AoE, a summon, a basic that dispels, and a passive that regretfully doesn't work the way we all thought it did. Yondu, he also unlocks Star-Lord. He's so overall great in the early game that it's almost a tragedy that after like 60 or 65, all of your investment in Yondu is it's kind of useless. Now, a lot of people say that once red stars start applying to summons, we can have a, a better version of Yondu, and that that may be true. Uh, I, I'm not going to go into speculation on what I think they can do to Yondu's kit. What I can tell you is in any fight I do with characters around similar power to Yondu, Yondu always kind of feels like the one out of place. His AoE doesn't do enough damage, even though it's undodgeable piercing. His summons don't survive long enough to make a difference. His basic rarely actually dispels anybody. And Centauri Hunter, as we know, pretty useless. This might be more of a statement of the Ravagers need a rework. Uh, this way, Yandu has a home. But right now, again, he is another homeless character. Uh, the Ravagers are all pretty abysmal. And you'll notice I have none of the minions on this list because I don't think I need to, because minions seem to be getting reworked as teams. So the mercenaries, the hand minions, and the ravagers will not make a top 10 in need of rework list, because I think it goes without saying that if the team has minions and isn't good, 
it should probably be taken a look at. Yandu specifically, though, he doesn't need that much detail. You don't need to bring up an entire team to make him good. He just needs a little bit more. He's a support character, so I get that he doesn't have to do a lot of damage, but then he needs a lot more support. I mean, I could think of two other support characters that are better than Yandu that don't need to be, and that's Nick Fury and Mr. Sinister. You know, those characters are tag support, and they are strictly better characters than Yandu. So a little bit of love shown to Yandu would definitely help a lot of players, especially new players, but even then, players that have surpassed the need for Yandu to kind of feel like, oh, great, I didn't waste this investment just to get Star-Lord, even though it's not really a waste. I got a good character that's worth investing in. Uh, next is kind of a two-piece. It's Ant-Man and Wasp. I'll start with Wasp. Uh, Wasp and Ant-Man both have the same issue. They have kits that are phenomenal uh, overall, but either due to speed or damage, it doesn't matter. Now, Wasp Basic is a chain that does decent damage. Cool, it's a basic. You don't, they don't need to be great. Uh, there's a stun. This is a, a stun that realistically can happen multiple times based on the fact that she gains charge whenever she dodges, you know? Uh, and she has a pretty decent dodge rate. So she has a, a targetable stun. It's situational, but she still has access to it. It's also a pretty decent attack. And then Flight of the Wasp is an AoE that hits anyone, including stealth targets. Now, this is kind of a remnant of a time long past. Um, in the old days, they had to clarify that a stealth target might not be hit by AoE. Uh, now they just hit everybody. Now you'll see attack all enemies. Uh, doesn't care if you're stealth or not because it is a giant AoE. This is almost an individual attack uh, five to ten times. The attack can't be countered. Again, maybe if this was piercing, maybe if uh, she had any way to take off buffs. I understand that's Ant-Man's value, but she just is a little bit lackluster. Um, again, it's just a damage issue. Her kit looks good overall. Uh, maybe a little bit of love on a passive. Uh, in my experience, any passive that has less than three or four lines of text is probably mediocre at best. Uh, on dodge, gain charge, and have a dodge per chance. Uh, as you know from you playing the game, your dodge chance is about 50% what advertised, and your opponent's dodge chance is always 100%. You can't hit your opponent's Spider-Man. So I know when you fight Wasp in a fight, she's more likely to dodge that last hit that'll kill her before she ults and kills your team. I understand that's just how AI works, but Wasp, uh, she needs to be treated a little bit differently considering the fact that she is, again, a tech blaster character. Blasters are supposed to represent some of the highest damage in the game, and she just kind of falls by the wayside. Ant-Man is in the exact same conversation. I, for one, love Ant-Man's kit. I think that Ant-Man's kit is almost perfect. A scrappy fighter having a dispel on basic that copies the effect. That's beautiful. Gum Up the Works is a two-turn ability block ready on turn one. Can't be dodged or blocked. Amazing, right? On paper, you look at this kit, attack all enemies for small damage. That's fine, but apply slow to all targets. And if Wasp it gets a boost, great. Escape plan, chance to gain assist now, and you know on spawn like i get it i see what they were trying to do with this kit so we all look at this kit and go these numbers are great like he has a dispel on basic that copies effects he has a, an ability block he has an aoe slow why is he not great and it's you know multiple different things uh the first is he just doesn't do damage to justify where he is he needs if you're doing a turn one aoe slow available it, it probably needs to do a little bit more than no damage. And that doesn't have to be the most powerful attack in the game. He's obviously not designed to be a true powerhouse character. Uh, but maybe then, if that's the case, then he has to add more than just slow or more turns of slow or uh, have a chance to hit multiple times. There's, there's small things that need to occur. Uh, as for his other abilities... You know, I, I don't think there's any issue with having an ability block for two turn. Uh, I think maybe if this had a chance to chain on basic, that might push him a little bit higher. But I think Ant-Man's biggest issue is damage overall. 
and not just not doing a lot of damage, I think he's doing less damage than what an average controller tech character at his investment would do. So even with Wasp built perfectly, Ant-Man and Wasp are relatively lackluster. They could use a quick pass, um, whether it be reworking the entire Avengers, who God knows they can use it, or just giving a little bit of a, of a kit check on Ant-Man and Wasp to make sure that they work as a team, like a true powerhouse. In my understanding of game design, I'd imagine if you want characters to be good in a team, uh, you can, by all means, work an entire team together. Like they did that with Cyclops, where Cyclops made Wolverine usable. But what are you going to do? Next, Nobu and Elektra. They're both together. Again, I'm not mentioning the hand minions, but I will mention Nobu and Elektra by hand. Nobu is uh, laughably terrible. Um, he, su he falls under the same conversation of bad summoners. Um, his summons don't matter. His basic doesn't kill anything. And his ultimate does nothing. Uh, for an ultimate that does nothing, a, you know, game counter and apply to allies, it should do this immediately. This should, this should be a two energy attack that uh, happens on turn one. It doesn't do anything. If it did damage, if it gives countered and then calls hand minions to attack, there are so many different ways to make Nobu not completely useless, especially since he's an unlock requirement. Well, recommendation for Phoenix. He's incredibly lackluster as the leader of a team. Um, the only benefit to Nobu is this completely crazy passive where hand characters have a chance to revive, which is almost like what they did with Red Skull, except Red Skull is a thousand percent better, and now they can't make Yon, um, and now they can't make Nobu better. You know, like they can't give that to Nobu too, even though Nobu might have benefited from it more. Um, he basically just needs to kind of be ripped apart and put back together again in pieces that make more sense as the leader of a ninja team. Oh, he basically just needs a complete rework, take him apart, put him back together, make him a leader of a villain city ninja team because he needs it. Same kind of conversation with Electra. Electra's actually gone through about three reworks, yet still completely useless. And a lot of it comes down to one simple stat. She has terrible focus for a character that has a dispel, <laughs> a nuke, I guess uh chance to revive like she has extra folk like just give her more focus stop trying to make extra focus for attacks on the like just just give her a focus when she uses into shadow she should remove the debuffs when she hits with vital strike it's called vital strike not oopsie do like kill something let it die it first of all it's already slow it already takes two turns after start to do why would you like why wouldn't it also do damage this is one of the problems when you see this percentage damage number because a lot of players will see 460 damage that's a lot that's a big number right but when you look at her actual damage number and you multiply it so it's like 40k damage on ult which is great at level 60 and terrible at any stage of the end game. Imagine if your ult did 40 damage in U6 or U7, 40k damage. Like, wouldn't do anything. It, the character would, would shrug it off and then kill her. She needs a boost. Now, granted, I have a very low Electra, so I understand that when uh, I talk about Electra, uh, you could say, well, well, Tony, your Electra's level 53. Great. So when tell me what your Electra does and how much better she is than mine, and then we'll both come to the agreement that she needs something. Now, if they want to make the city hand team counter the defenders, do so. Go for it. Make a team that does that. Rework the entire hand. But until that point, I don't know what to tell you. You know, like she she is incredibly lackluster. Her and Crossbones are the two legendary unlocks that new players get. Uh, to help them with the villains campaign and they're barely acceptable in the villains campaign let alone in endgame these characters need love as fast as they can get it uh, and the last character surprise 
Bullseye. Uh, he is a villain, city, skill, blaster, mercenary, and the only tag that matters for... Mer and the only tag that matters for him is mercenary, because you can use him technically in the early stages to do the mercenary flash event. Uh, his throwing knife does no damage, even though he gains crit chance for the attack. His uh, card trick does no damage. Uh, his kill shot kills nothing, uh, unless you're level 20 and you're fighting a level 30 bullseye. And never miss is uh, adorable, because he doesn't miss, but how does the character who never misses uh, still miss sometimes? You know, unless you have way too much investment. Bullseye is a character who does not miss. He should start off as a character who does not miss. As a matter of fact, he should be able to target people in stealth. There's so much you can do. There's so much real estate you can explore with Bullseye. To leave him as a blaster character that doesn't do damage, uh, that isn't useful almost at any stage of the game... Uh, except maybe the earliest of of mercenary challenge for the the flash event i i understand that new characters uh, are more exciting for the player base i do and i i get that but you know you can't just abandon the characters that started the game uh, especially when they're so easy to get for new players there is of course course a scale you know characters you get at the beginning of the game shouldn't be the best characters in the game and i understand that they did that with hulk uh, hulk is a free character wolverine is a free character these are free characters you know when you look at it like that they don't have to be the best i don't think hulk is the best character i don't think his rework made him Stop what you're doing and work on it. But I can tell you there are times I fought a Hulk on a raid node or in a war, and uh, he was kind of a pain. And that's enough of a rework. Enough to make a character go from completely unusable to useful in one or two situations. Bullseye is barely even useful in the mercenary challenge event that he is necessary for or recommended for. You can't just let these characters die. It's one thing to wait to rework an entire team. It's another thing to look at characters like Bullseye, like Crossbones, uh, Elektra, Ant-Man and Wasp, and allow them to be mediocre at best for the entirety of the game. Now, this game is only about two years old. Some of these characters are almost two years old, uh, almost as long as the game, and have never been touched. And it's about time some of them got a little bit of love. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Come below and let me know any other characters you think I might have left out. Again, no minions, but which characters do you feel uh, just need a rework, whether they're on a team or not? Uh, other than that, I want you guys to have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.